So Just Stop Oil, uh, I googled it. Uh, Just Stop Oil is an environmental activist group in the UK using civil resistance and direct action with the aim of ensuring the UK government commits to halting new fossil fuel licensing and production. Launched on Valentine's Day this year and held a month of oil terminal disruptions across England in April 2022. Now, if you've read about them, it's because of the controversy they've uh, uh, created due to their quote-unquote aggressive protest methods and stage vandalism of works of art in British galleries. So, um, as I said, I wanted to find out more about who they are, what, what they do, and why they're doing what they're doing, so I can understand, because... I'm always aware that what one reads in a newspaper will be seen through somebody else's lens. And I always like to lend the, I, I like to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak, uh, and get the, the picture. So joining me now is Patrick Hart, who is a spokesperson for Just Stop Oil and joins me now. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I, I'm going to come from a place of complete ignorance. You know, that, that's always the best way. I'm not going to assume I know anywhere. Did I sum up? Up. I mean, I just got it off Wikipedia or something like that. Did I correctly sum up who Just Stop Oil is? Hi, Trisha. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, no, absolutely. You got it. So we, we are in civil resistance with the UK government and we're demanding an end to all new fossil fuel projects. At the moment, the government have over 100 that they're planning. And uh, it's not just our opinion. The UN have said, the International Energy Agency has said, that this cannot happen if we want a livable future for our planet. So we're saying it, all of that needs to end. We need an emergency transition to sustainable, renewable energy. So when we talk about oil, we're talking about uh, fracking. Does that come under it as well? Absolutely, yeah. Oil and gas. So fracking is probably the, the least popular, the absolute worst kind, as well as all the harms of fossil fuel burning itself we've also got the risk of earthquakes and subsidence um it's just an absolute nightmare and it's completely unnecessary the crazy thing at the moment is that renewable energy is eight or nine times cheaper than all of these fossil fuels that we're still apparently desperate to extract so there really, really is no reason to do it and we really do need to see this transition as an emergency and it needs to start right away um, so yeah absolutely fracking okay. is a really bad idea yeah, because fr fracking and even groups like the Countryside Alliance and what have you, I mean, it's a, it's a very wide ranging group of, of organisations which uh, who would have a lot of sympathy. OK, so I get I get what the, the, the goal is. Now, I can understand uh, going to, you know, um, uh, you know, going to uh, oil sites and what, what have you and things like that to to uh, create uh well, headlines, really. I don't understand about the art bit. Can you please explain to me? I don't understand. I was like, am I being really dumb? Is it because it's an oil painting? Why would you attack valuable works of art? Yeah, OK, no problem. So uh, if uh, the way I put it is try and think of a successful protest organisation ever in history that didn't cause disruption, that didn't cause some shock, that didn't cause some outrage. It, it's impossible to think of one. If you want to make progress, mm -hmm. you need to grab attention and you need to do things which stop people in their tracks, make them think, make them, make them question the path that we're on. And, I mean, if, if you're worried about damage, no damage was done to any paintings. I don't think anyone in Just a Poor actually wants to damage... Our, our priceless works of art there was a protective screen on it mm. the fact that you're asking me is is proof really that it works that it's got people's attention and we're so desperate we're so doesn't near it make, doesn't return. it make them angry doesn't it does doesn't it make them angry rather than sympathetic though yeah and and actually i think again if you look back at, at history anger is often part of the process so i've got a really good fact for you if you want to hear it um, in 1966, when Martin Luther King was active in in civil rights in the United States, so all the progress we've seen, he was a pivotal person in, in getting equal rights, to moving towards equal rights for black people. His disapproval in America at the time was 63%. People hated him. They really didn't like him. And now, in America, 95% of people think he's a national hero and he gets his own public holiday. So actually, at the time, if you're really making progress, you're going to provoke some anger. It's just a fact. There's no way around it. 
So the fact that we're getting a response is what we need. That's that's what we need from people. Yeah. So, OK. And, and I don't know who was involved in, in, you know, with the ambulances not getting to hospitals and things like that, taking over the roads and what have you. It, it, was that you or somebody else? And that's one of the problems that there are so many different groups using the same tactics. It gets confusing. Was that just Stop Oil or another group? Mm, yeah. So, I mean, I should tell you, I'm, a, I'm an NHS doctor in my day job. I've just I've literally just come from work for this interview. Um, I've been involved in activism for a long time, and there are lots of paramedics who I've met who are my friends within activism. We all recognise that the biggest health crisis facing humanity is the climate crisis. Yes, there are ambulance delays, but I'll tell you what causes them. 12 years of austerity measures, meaning that there's there's not enough spent on health and social care, and we're queuing no, up... What, 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 what I mean is... When there was an accident, sorry, I, I mean, and I agree with you, don't even get me started on the NHS. Yeah. <laughs> also in the NHS, don't get me started on that. Right. But I, I, th there was recently a case where there was a car crash and an ambulance, uh, while well, it was reported, couldn't get, you know, to or from the hospital and what have you. And, you know, people have said, you know, they're driving, I've got to get somebody to hospital and what have you. Is that just stop oil or is that another group that's doing that? Because surely when it comes to individuals and health, as as an NHS doctor, that's surely something you wouldn't want want to do. Absolutely. It's, it's our absolute aim to not cause any harm to anyone in our protests. They're all, all non-violent, peaceful protests. I don't know the incident you're mm -hmm. talking about. I've been in so many... I've lost count of the number of protests I've been in. We have a blue light policy. We always let ambulances through. I've got so many photos and videos on my phone of ambulances being allowed through and often of, of the paramedics leaning out the window and cheering us on. So I, I don't know the specific, specific incidents you're talking about, but we let ambulances through. It's really right. important to us. I think, I think partly people are looking for a reason to hate us more and it's an easy one to, to bring up if you want to try and, um, try and spread some, yeah. some thought about somebody disinformation way so tell me again again you know some and i i'm just quoting what some of my colleagues at this network would say if you don't like fossil fuels then you shouldn't use them do you drive a car and all of that sort of thing there is a tendency to look at the individual lifestyles of the protesters as well uh, yeah. i've got a vegan kid who won't wear leather in any shape or form and and tries to and again nhs tries to live uh practice what uh they preach um, is that the same for you that you wouldn't ride driver or, or members of, I'm not going to focus on you particularly, but members of Just Stop Oil that they refuse to drive cars? I mean, I guess even if you drive an electric car, is that oil generated? I don't know. I mean, do you practice what you preach? Is it possible to do that? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind telling you about what I do. I, I don't drive. I um, just walk and cycle everywhere. If I have to, I get the train. I don't eat meat. I'm a vegan. I don't fly. I buy my clothes from charity shops. I have renewable energy powers. I'm doing everything I can possibly think of, but I'm the first to admit I'm stuck in a world where we're all reliant on fossil fuels to a degree. That's the way the world's built, but it doesn't have to be that way. We've got mm. extremely good alternatives. As a doctor, I recognise that if people get out of their cars and they walk and cycle more, it's good for their health as well. The problem is we don't have very good cycle lanes. We live in dirty cities or what lots of us do where we, we don't feel confident to do that. So if we make it possible, I think people will do it and actually their lives will be a lot better. I'm certainly a lot happier since I stopped driving. I'm a lot fitter, feel great. So I'd encourage everyone else to do the same. I realise what I do is only a drop in the ocean, but but um, I do it because I don't want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> That's my main reason. Yeah, and, and, and I guess you're lucky that you might be in a city because if you're in a rural area and you've got kids to take to school and, and, and what have you, then you're going to have to use, you know, uh, you, you are going to have to use a car and what have you. I mean, the letting down of tyres of cars, is that just stop oil? Is that someone else? You see where, see where people start getting confused? We don't know which group's doing what. Is that just stop oil attacking four by fours? So, no, that's not. It's, I mean, it's really nice of you to have me on here to try and clear some of this up for you. So that's not just yeah, the point. Yeah. Um, 
I think that's another group. But um, I know what you mean. I mean, I, I come from a small village in the countryside and my mum and dad would really struggle if they didn't have a car. Um, again, mm-hmm. we're asking for part of what we're asking for is decent public transport. So people have an option because at the moment they just don't have a choice today. Um, people need to be able to make a choice. A lot of people want to make good choices, but until that's offered to them, they're stuck. So that's why we need government to actually do the right thing, step in and help people out. Now, talking about government, do you really think, really, 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 let's get real here, with the current, I was going to say with the current government and the current whoever is in charge today or tomorrow, do you mm-hmm. think this government is is likely to give a rat's you-know-what about your your protestations? Do you see more opportunity if there was a general election and, for instance, there was a Labour government, or do you think it's much of a muchness? I, don't, we, I mean, as just a point, we're, we're not calling for any particular government to be in charge. We don't mind, as long as the government does the right thing and stops... I'd like any government... Sorry to interrupt. I'd like any government to be in charge <laughs> right now. At uh, this <laughs> stage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Just, just somebody actually at the top making some decisions would be nice. So, um, yeah, we, we we don't mind who it is. We just... Uh, we, you ask about whether it's possible that a government might do it. What what's, what we know for sure is physics doesn't care who's in charge. Physics is going to mean that we're looking at an un- uninhabitable planet. We're already seeing 8 million people a year die from fossil fuels in the in the world. Every year is getting worse. The planet's on fire. We're, we're looking at absolute... Uh, hellish vision of the future for our children so whoever's in charge is going to have to pull their socks up and actually do this it, it's a matter of life and death i don't say that lightly it's an absolute fact i've worked abroad in mm. countries where children are starving to death i've seen that in front of my eyes i've had to watch children starve and die because of the effects of the climate crisis because people can't even eat anymore and and bef- much sooner than a lot of people think that will be us as well we're going to run out of food on our shelves. i'm not i'm not exaggerating here these are the facts of the matter and people need to know this stuff but here's the thing you've still got a massive number of the older generation i'd say it's probably largely the older generation who don't even believe in climate crisis um you know in their nice comfortable houses and i hear what you're saying in developing countries i mean i grew up in in east africa central east africa when you lived in developing countries you really do start seeing the effects um america here with the weather and what have you they people will go to all lengths to explain this is what always happens they said the ice age was coming science doesn't know anything or what have you um how how are you are you appealing are you looking towards younger people um you know i know some of the most of the climate change people and people who are at the forefront of let's take the words climate change out of it because it's too emotionally charged uh caring for the planet most of the caring for the planet people do tend to be younger people uh, rather than use and abuse which are the older generation are you looking to the younger generation to make the differences now have you pretty much written off the older generation i mean i, I wouldn't blame you if you did <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not writing off any anybody. We're we're asking everybody who who feels they can, who can get out of the streets, to come and join us and make their voice heard. We haven't got time, and we can't afford to write anybody off here. We need everybody we can possibly get. Mm-hmm. We know we can't bring literally everybody in the country with us, but every day more and more people are waking up to the fact that this is life and death that we're looking at an uninhabitable earth and that we have to act right now in this brief window we've got where we might be able to make a difference and save what we can of the future. Mm. Um, so, but Patrick, I've, sorry to jump, sorry to jump yeah. in there. Just coming back to the original point, you do have a hostile, from your point of view, I'm saying, not my, I mean, from your point of view, you do have a, by and large, a fairly hostile media. You do, by and large, have a huge, you know, as I said, the older population, it tends to be the older population, who... The words climate change mean nothing to them. They they will turn themselves inside out to tell you that it doesn't exist and what have you. Um, you know, so that that is the reason why. How do you push 
an agenda like yours forward when you have an older population who tends to be the decision makers and in decision making positions uh, denying that such a thing exists um, and you know I mean how and a media who is you know largely hostile is it just by creating headlines just by creating a, a, a nuisance which then gets negatively reported on anyway so I mean, a big part of this is telling the truth. So we need to, we keep coming on these sorts of shows. We, we use every channel we can to speak the truth. And every day more and more people are waking up to the fact that this really is really happening right now. I think the, the tragic thing is, as time goes on, and we see, you know, 40 plus degree heat waves in the UK, we see thousands of ex excess deaths this summer, we see people with houses burning down, it becomes harder and harder to deny what's happening all around you. You just have to look outside the window and you can see that the world is changing rapidly before our eyes and we're headed for an absolute nightmarish future. And for some people, like you say in East Africa, that nightmare is right here, right now. I, I don't, I don't think um, there's, I mean, any tactic here that will non-violently push this forward is what we're doing. If that means we have to cause disruption, then that's what we'll keep doing. We've said to the government, as soon as they meet our demands, as soon as they do the right thing, which, which the United Nations has told them they need to do, then we'll stop. But until that point, what else can we do? We're looking at, we're looking at such a horrendous yeah. situation. We must continue. We will continue. I have a duty to protect my patients. Well, it's, it's, right. Yeah. Well, it, 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 you, you, you've picked a very difficult um, road to, to, to plough. Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm making no judgments here. I'm sure people will call in and text and what have you. I'm not here to be adversarial or anything. I'm just here to hear what you've said. And, and thank you so much for doing that today. Uh, and, and thank you for the amazing work you do at the NHS, as I say to all of the staff. Uh, just Up Oil, uh, Patrick Hart, uh, telling us, about the organization. More after this.